Hello everyone. We are off to Japan, but first we are landing at Vancouver Airport, which will set us up for our connecting flight over to Narita Airport. Once landed, we had about an hour layover, so we had some time to explore Vancouver's airport before the scheduled flight. <laughs> It was a type of interactive robot that was cruising this store and aimed at a certain type of tourist, it seems. We have also found that coming to this airport over the years, it has a fairly impressive collection of First Nations art. This one is called Baseball Player. We were informed that we now have an over three hour wait for our flight due to a typhoon that was passing over Tokyo. So we found this quiet multi-purpose room and used it to do some stretching. Getting tired, we were happy to see our plane finally pull up, with boarding announced shortly afterward. They have a pillow and blanket placed on the seat for these long flights, which can make getting sat down a bit of a challenge sometimes. It takes about 10 hours to fly over to Narita, and as we were landing, it was obvious that they had been getting a pretty good amount of rain from the passing typhoon. When in Tokyo, we base ourselves in the Ueno district, and the best way to get there, we find, is by taking the Keisai Skyliner high-speed train, which leads directly from the airport and goes right to Ueno. After our long, three-hour delayed flight, we're really glad to check into our hotel and find our room. The type of hotel room we got is cramped, but before you go... Oh my god! These Japanese rooms are so small. How could you possibly sleep with two people? Hotels in Japan do offer all types of room sizes, so rest assured. It's just that we like the business hotels as they're economical, and the country is mainly what we have come to see. So guys, this was in our hotel. It's called the Smoke Guard. It also says... Keep away from direct flames. But basically, you fill it up with air and put it over your head, and you use this to get out of a smoke filled room. Hmm, not sure about that one. I may be wrong, but I'm pretty sure that would not be allowed in Canada. It was getting late, and we needed something to eat, finding a great pasta restaurant near the hotel. When we got to Tokyo, the typhoon had moved off to the north, but as you can see, there was still a lot of humidity left in the air. We never explored the park at night and felt this was a good opportunity, especially during the light rain, which made the area more beautiful. There will be portions of this video where the sights and sounds are more important than me talking, so like now, I will pause my narration so you can experience them. After a decent night's sleep, we woke up to a new day in Japan and found Ueno Station busy with people enjoying the day off.
Not yet adjusting to the local menu, I found a familiar name, and since we've never been to one of these, we decide to give the restaurant a try. I did enjoy the food, but I have to admit it was a bit too North American for me while in Japan, so later I seeked out foods of a local type. When in Rome, right? After we ate, we went over to Ueno Park, which is accessed by a walking bridge from the station, but you can also access by this street below, aptly named Ueno Park Street. This place is called Gojoten Shrine, dating from 1662. The Shinto Shrine is mainly used by people praying for healing or success in exams, and as you can see, it has a beautiful walking path with many Tori gates that take you down to the shrine. Near the shrine is Kiyomizu Kanondo Buddhist Temple built in 1631 and is the place we go to give thanks for a safe trip upon arrival to Japan. As is often the case, pictures are not allowed in the temple. I've actually seen some tourists get quite an ear burning from the caretakers. The temple is famous for its moon tree, which is a portion of a pine tree shaped into a circle. An earlier tree had caught the attention of the woodblock artist Hiroshige and was included in his 100 famous views of Edo. We're going to an area called Ueno Daibatsu, which has an interesting past, and as you will see shortly, only the bronze face of Buddha is remaining from a once 3.6 meter tall statue. Here is how the statue originally looked in the 1920s. The main reason for this alteration was the Great Kanto Earthquake of 1923, which caused the head to topple off the seated bronze statue, which was originally cast during the Edo period. Even though the statue had been restored in the past after a fire and a previous earthquake, the decision was made to melt much of the bulk down to help with the Japanese military's war effort in World War II. In 1972, the face was put on display in the position where the statue once sat. Probably one of the most impressive shrines at Ueno Park is Toshogo Shrine, which is covered in gold foil and also has several hand-carved decorations including flowers, birds and dragons throughout the site. It also has many stone lanterns that will lead you up to the shrine. The shrine was built in 1651 and was recently restored. It is a tribute to Tokugawa Itsu, the founder and first shogun of the Tokugawa Shogunate of Japan.
You are allowed to walk around the outside of the shrine itself, but the interior is now closed to the public for protection and preservation. However, on our first trip to Japan in 2008, before restoration work began, you could still take a guided tour inside, which we now feel very fortunate to have been able to do so. And they did not allow pictures, which is a common thing I find in Japan when it comes to the inside of certain buildings. I will step back for a moment and let you enjoy some examples of the hand-carved decorations as well as some more views of the shrine's architecture. The shrines and temples here took us into Japan's past, but now it was time for the present as we ventured out to a festival held in Ueno Park's Takanodai Square. It was called the Panda Mid-Autumn Festival. After some exciting performances, we found ourselves going back to traditional Japan again, finding this garden, also with a bit of an autumn theme. This is one of my favorite areas of Ueno Park. It's a large natural pond where along with being the site of a Daikoku Tin temple, you can also find several types of migratory and stationary birds, fish, and also lotus plants that we were lucky enough to catch in flower. This was a bit interesting. It appeared that air was bubbling up through some water that was trapped in the lotus plant's leaves. If you're so inclined, the pond has an area where you can rent some damn romantic boats. I think. Maybe I'll try asking Donna out on one at some point. I believe this is a grey heron which we found near the walkway. It had been a long day and we needed some rest before getting supper and seeing a bit of the area at night. However, I noticed that someone was filming behind the curtain. And I was curious to know why. And joining her behind the curtain, I could certainly see why because it had a great view of the Sky Tree Tower.
With a bit of rest, we are off to get something to eat. One thing about Japanese restaurants, they're very unique and fun to be in. I will stop here. Thank you and please enjoy the rest of the video and some scenes of the Ueno streets at night.